Fellow at Taiwan Asia Exchange Foundation, she joins me now live from Taiwan. Sana, good to see you. What do you think uh, Lee's legacy will be? Uh, he was not in power, so it's definitely not as important as someone who was in power. But of course, if we look at Lee Kichyang, he was very different from uh, now what we see in our in China, Chinese current uh, politician. So, uh, for example, he was uh, less ideology driven, and if we compare him with Xi Jinping, he was definitely one of the last remaining moderate politicians in China. So in Chinese political system, of course, uh, he was premier, even though when he was in power, president has much more power than a premier. And uh, this is so more uh, during Xi Jinping tenure that we are seeing that they, there is just one man's legacy that we are going to talk about, even if Xi Jinping is not alive, is not there. Uh, but now in China, despite Xi prominence, what we saw when Li was there for 10 years, that Li was still seen as an important figure Despite being a premier, he was a strong supporter of open market economy and an advocate of free market that was also known as economics. Uh, but for very different reasons, it could not really be materialized. It could not be fully utilized his uh, potential and his ideas for China and for the global uh, issues. Uh, but Dr. Lee, I think what we really and what the discussion is going to be uh, that how the, the next generation of politicians are going to be. Uh, we won't really see any politician who's more liberal, focused on economic reforms and advocate of stable foreign relationship uh, with major countries. And also, uh, we are not going to really see anyone who's less assertive, who's focused on less assertive China. So, of course, differences could exist, but I do believe that it is very important for countries to cooperate. And even though when it comes to China and that was, I feel that uh, we are not going to see this kind of uh, discussion after Lee is not going to be there because I do feel that he was one of the last remaining politician who was kind of moderate, who was kind of uh, uh, focused on less aggressive assertive of China. Right. Sana, we're, we're running out of time, so if you can keep your next answer limited to 30 seconds or so. My question is, what do you think is the general feeling uh, in China after Lee's death? Uh, of course, I feel that there's a lot of respect if you look at Chinese social media, but of course, there is on social media, there's a lot of specifically on the international social media, we're seeing there's a lot of uh, uh, narrative about how it might be foul play. But I do not think that there is anything that's not, uh, that doesn't seem all right. And China is not really Russia. It happens in Russia. It doesn't happen in China. So in China, definitely, we are seeing that ministers and officials are disappearing. Uh, but then I feel that it is still uh, other than not something that's uh, driven by the state. So I do feel there's a lot of respect, but this is not something uh, that was led by the Chinese government. All right, Sana Hashmi, thank you very much for talking to us here on TRT World. Really appreciate your taking out the time.